Hey there everyone, Steve here again with another Unity Asset review. Um, today we're going to be looking at the Mansion Pack by Greenworks. This particular asset retails at $36 at the time of writing this. Um, let's get the let's get the fun stuff out of the way first. Um, I give this quality wise, I give it a pass. Uh, I think the quality is good. There's a couple of nuances and stuff I'll talk about when we dive into the actual um, the actual demo scenes. But all in all, again, we're off pass fail. So I think that passes uh, modularity and workability. This is a really good pass. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into the, um, the manifest scene. Uh, support and serviceability, um, I haven't really reached out to them at all, but they seem to be active in their communities and in their um, in their uh, different, you know, uh, mediums for that. So I would also give that a pass. And value, I mean, at $36 USD, uh, I, I think this has a lot of, of value to it. Um, so, uh, without further ado, let's hop in here and get into the actual demo scenes. Um, so there are two demo scenes and a manifest. So we're just going to go through this real quick. One of the things you're going to notice when I go inside, um, they have a culling solution <laughs> pre-rolled for this. And I didn't disable it because my goal with these reviews is to drag and drop my character controller in and just run it as standard as possible to sort of show the, you know, serviceability essentially and the workability or more, more the workability and the serviceability. How much effort do you have to put in to actually make this thing run? Um, and you're going to see that they have a culling solution which interferes with my culling solution. So right there you're starting to already see it pop in but it's going to get even worse inside. They also have a script that opens the doors for you when you get inside of a proximity. There's a collider trigger that does that. That's nice. I did have to do a few tweaks on my own to make it, uh, to make my character controller work with that because it didn't, that didn't just work out the box. Uh, there's a tag system that it uses and you had to change a couple tags and I think I had to write one extra line of code. Um, but once I did that, it works it works fine the only thing is and you'll see us in the second demo scene i'll point it out that you have a little bit of an issue with um uh when you go through some of those colliders it it derps up funny with my character controller and i haven't quite figured out why but so right now not having too many troubles but now all of a sudden you saw that on the left hand corner there it's already the culling is kicking in i i haven't quite figured out uh, why it does it, but that's not even that bad. You're going to see it get even worse. So here it gets really bad. Um, so this is going to be an area too, I think, where it, uh, okay, it didn't do it there, but, uh, sometimes there are, there are points where that solution or where that, um, collider I mentioned earlier triggers in a weird way and it sort of forces you down to the ground. It didn't do it there. Let's see if we can get it. So right there is calling again. Um, I, again, like the goal is to have this, like when I just dump it in to have it be as, you know, true to nature as possible. Um, and it, it, uh, uh, unfortunately kind of doesn't, <laughs> doesn't pass it there. It just, this, this calling solution they're, them conflicting is just causing issues, but it is what it is. Um, so, and it's going to get even more annoying the closer that we get to some of this stuff. But, um, so I did want to point out some areas, I, and I don't know if some of this stuff is a matter of, um, yeah, so right there, it forced me into the ground, so that's a good example, and you kind of got to jump and run to get out of it i haven't i do think that that's due to the collider that is right there because as soon as i get out of that boundary box uh it it kind of solves itself so as far as you know that's concerned honestly if i were going to use this in production i would disable their automatic door opening thing 
and just not use it because it seems a it seems to cause issues with my controller uh, but b it just um, it uh, um, <clears throat> it 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 isn't really in my opinion it isn't conducive to the sort of gameplay that I make either so I would prefer to have a situation where either it's physics based you walk up to it and it opens or there's a trigger where you hit you know E or F or whatever the hell you want but you can see that the wall running does work uh, slicing does work so all of those and that again I hit that door trigger and I think that as soon as I get out of that collider it, it seems to self correct so I think that's what's causing that I haven't had a chance to really dive into that too deep because to be honest, again, I'm not going to use that sort of solution in any game that I would make with this asset. I would disable that function completely and just have it be a button press or something like that. Um, so, there we go. Oh, come on. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to run through the whole mansion because that would be uh, just absurd given all the... Um, all of the issues with uh, the those collider issues with with those door opening colliders and then with the um, uh, culling, I just I don't think that that's going to be worth my time, but uh, or or your time. But I will show all of this stuff works if, if I can actually do it right. <laughs> let's do this. Uh, let's try to make this work. There we go. So. Obviously, all <laughs> or that calling again, um, but just to show that does work. Uh, all right. Well, anyways, so let's hop out of this um, this particular uh, uh, outside of the play mode, and you can see that um, you know it. The details on this are 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 good. I think uh, for the, for thirty six bucks. And that, you know, and once you add, you know, lighting effects and stuff like that, I, I think this is, I think that the quality there is, is incredibly high for $36. Um, so let's go into the second demo, which is going to be this one. This just kind of shows, uh, well, it shows that, so this, the demo we just ran through does not show external gates. Um, this one has external gates, which also use those triggers. And it gets a little more funky as well with um, with how it's going to like, force me into the ground into in some of the... So right there, it just forces me into the ground. But once I get out of that box, I can jump out. And I, I do think that's just a... I do think that's just a trigger issue. Or a collider issue, rather. Because it does it out here, too. Uh, with some of these... Okay, it's not going to do it there. It's going to prove me wrong. But... This one just kind of shows, so there are external gates that um, are modularized and have, you know, doors that you can trigger. This kind of shows the true modularity of how, of sort of everything that you can make with, with, this, uh, with this kit. Um, realistically, you can make, like, it doesn't have mansions. You can make, like, small mic mansions or even just houses with this kit. Um, and you could populate an entire town with, um, you know, the stuff that you make with it. Um, so then it's got a couple of these statue things. Again, here, like, I, so the polys and trisses on these are, are, are in my opinion, manageable. Um, but it still has a decent amount of fidelity. If you really get close, really look close, it's not like 4K resolution or anything like that. But at the same point depending on the type of game you're making, who's going to pay attention to that? You know, it's not really the end of the world. Um, but all these guys just work once you set up that tag on the player. Um, but yeah, so here's that, those calling issues. So let's pop out of here. Let's hop into the uh, asset manifest, and then we will look at that. Um, sorry, dive in deeply. So here's, here's why I think this is well worth the um the money uh on it and the modularity is is i think better than um some other similar assets so you know when you're doing level design um you want to have as much flexibility 
with as few uh you know in unity prefabs and other game engines you know game objects whatever whatever you call it whatever you call them in your game engine but you want to have as much flexibility with as few of those modular pieces those building blocks as possible now what a lot of assets do uh, a lot of environmental assets especially building like buildings assets um, is they'll have two sides so uh, on a wall it'll have like an exterior and an interior so it makes building and like snapping those pieces together easier that's all fine and dandy but the problem is then you need more assets like more individual modular assets to 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 do more you essentially essentially more is more not less is more um, with the asset like this because of how they're set up <laughs> less is more and what I mean by that is all of these wall pieces for example are just one-sided so uh, yeah for a for a window you're gonna have to pair it correctly with one of the exterior window pieces but if you're building um, uh, so you can build out an, an exterior, for example, with these with these brick pieces or these cement pieces, but then you have a lot more architectural um, freedom on the interior of the building. Uh, you don't have to have the walls of the building specifically coincide with the uh, walls of the exterior, which, again, from an from an archivist standpoint, architectural visualization. Um, which good level design or good level designers should understand architecture to a certain degree, in my opinion, or should at least have an appreciation for it. Um, when you do, when you're doing archviz, you understand real, real quick <laughs> that you want that flexibility. You want to be able to build an, an exterior foundation, but then have a more creative interior. Uh, you, you want to put walls where there may otherwise not be able to have where you may not otherwise be able to have walls placed and stuff like that this asset allows for that specifically because of the fact that they're not dual-sided assets um so does it take a little more does it require a little more effort when you're actually building a level yes absolutely <laughs> but you get far more like you you can have far more complexity with your levels in that regard uh, with an asset like this whereas with an with an asset where they have dual sided walls and stuff like that you have uh, you 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 tend to have a lot more cookie cutter buildings essentially so at the end of the day it depends on i guess what you're looking for if you're looking for more complexity a more pro level you know design option then this sort of asset is going to be that even in how they do um the ceiling pieces right you could, if you wanted to build an attic, you could angle these wall pieces to be able to accommodate these, or you could uh, just build the walls inside, you know, perpendicular, right? So <clears throat> again, I think that these, that this asset allows for a lot, like 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 far more complexity in that regard. So you've got. Uh, larger pieces if you just want to blanket it and then you have smaller pieces if you want to be real finite about your about your design and the same goes for the walls a lot of angle pieces a few different chimney options a few different flat options you've got your you know spiky grades for the top and then when you're getting into the interior so the the interiors and exteriors you've got the same sort of options here on these you also have the ability uh, uh, to quickly swap out the materials and stuff like that um, so you can have different wallpapers stuff like that and you have you just have a lot more flexibility with with how that goes versus it being a like a static mesh or something like that um, <clears throat> so lots of wall options lots of wall options uh, again you've got the larger ones if you want to if you don't want that more finite control um, a lot of individual edge pieces so building out edges on the exterior that's what these sorts of things are for um, you've got you know alcoves um, again <laughs> this is where those individual set pieces really come into play um, got a few different carpet options which I like to see 
Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you know how much of a sucker for clutter I am. So I like so the fact that they have multiple, you know, ornate carpets is really nice. Um, a few different uh, ceiling pieces. So if you want to, just, if you don't want to build an attic or anything like that, you just you know flip these guys, and that's your ceiling pieces. So a few different options for that to build it out individually or to batch it. Um, and then a few different tile options. You've got individual tiles here. Uh, you can, you've got, you've got them batched there. You can actually, um, drag these guys in, uh, into these larger sets, uh, inside of the scene. So it's, you know, it's relatively simple to drag just one of these tiles in into here, and then it populates the entire thing. You did a really good job on that, mo on the modularity on that. You've got a number of different ornate pillars and standard pillars, uh, and then you've got um, the base sections of exterior walls. You have options for that, corner options, uh, long edge options, uh, lots of windows, as you can see. <laughs> Um, the one thing that I would have liked to see is to have some animated windows. They really don't have that, um, but that's more of a nitpicky thing, I guess, in my opinion. If you really, if you really wanted to have uh, uh, the ability to exit a window or something like that, you could just not put the window in, <laughs> or make it, you know, make it breakable inside of your your game or something like that. Just make these pieces breakable and then you can exit relatively easily out of a large area like this if you set your character controller up right. Um, so window frames, lots of them. I mean, lots of options for that. <laughs> um, uh, different balcony rails and stuff like that. Uh, lots of options for that. Of different heights as well. Uh, different moldings here. So uh, roof moldings. Um, a few different lights that have pre, uh, pre illumination, uh, on them, a couple of light poles and light posts. Uh, let's go over here again. So more balcony options. If you want to be lazy, you have them chunked out for you already. Uh, a couple of statues. I would have liked to see it, to have seen more of these, if I'm being honest. Um, I, again, if you've watched my previous videos, you know how much clutter, or you know how much I like clutter. Um, so I would have liked to have seen a little more clutter in here. These do have lods, as you can see on the right side. Um, so that's nice. Uh, here are those gates. There's only two exterior gates, a small one and a large one. Honestly, at the end of the day, you aren't really going to need more than this if you're building, you know, these sorts of environments. Uh, um, so I, I don't think that the fact that there's only one small and one large, I don't think that's a problem personally. Uh, but you've got lots of fence options for building out those fences. Um, again, chunked, uh, like large chunks, large chunked areas or smallers, if you want to individually build them. Um, a few different stairwell options, exterior stairwells specifically. Then you've got the interior stairwells. These, I think, are modularized in a... Um, in a very nice manner as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, the one thing, one thing I don't see in this manifest, despite the fact that it is in there, is there is an angle uh, for these. I don't, uh, I don't see it in here. But there is an angled section. It's weird that they didn't put that in the in the uh, manifest. You actually saw the angled section. Um, in the uh, in one of the um, the previous demo levels that I went uh, that I that I went through, there were a couple areas where I you could see the angled section there. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird that they don't have that in there. Realistically, you can build that yourself with this as well. Um, you can just turn these and these smaller ones allow for that sort of um, uh, that sort of function. If you pair it with uh, if that guy is the right size. Yeah, if you pair it with that guy on the landings, you can do that, and then you've you've obviously got the um, you know triangled section there. So you can do that. Oh, you've got this guy here too. So you can do that without steps. Uh, I mean, from an architectural standpoint, most of the time you're not going to have steps in that area, anyways. 
Uh, usually when a stairwell turns in architecture, it's not going to be, um, you're not going to have stairs on that turning area. It's going to be a landing. Um, the one exception being spiral staircases, which you can't, that's one thing you can't do with this one, which is unfortunate. Um, so if the developer watches this, love to see a spiral staircase. <laughs> uh, but um, again, that's being crazy nitpicky on my part, and I don't think it's even worth really, like, given the small amount of money that this costs, again, the 36 bucks, I, I don't think, I mean, you get so much here that I don't think that that's a make or break. It shouldn't be for anybody. But you've got those railings for the landings here. Um, <clears throat> some uh, baseboards here, internal baseboards. You can use these for a number of things, though, um, because they're, you know, multi-use. <laughs> uh, and then you've got the bases of the stairwells here. Um, so... Get slid, those get slid over, and uh, that forms the base of the stairwells. Uh, you've got a bunch of doors. I don't remember if I mentioned that before. You've got some archways, uh, interior and exterior archways. Um, and then you are getting to your exterior stuff, so the cobblestone um, pathways and the more, uh, I forget the term for this, but there's there's a term for that type of stone walkway uh, and then you've got a decent amount of hedges as well um, you know you can build you, you could build some pretty cool hedge mazes with this in my opinion so and then cover it you could even go as so far as to cover it with some of these things if you want to create an enclosed hedge maze hedge maze garden oh uh, and a lot of just standalone bushes as well um, uh, these have lots of them as you can see uh, some of the stuff doesn't, some of the more specific, like, you know, building block set pieces don't, but that's fine, you know, and then you've got other, you've got some vines, so these would be vines you would put on the outside of the buildings to give it more flair, or you could even set a trigger for your character to climb on these, um, then some standalone ones as well, some larger ones, so, yeah, that's the, that is the, um, mansion, pack uh, by Greenworks. Uh, again, I think it's a worthwhile pack. Um, for 36 bucks, I, I, I think the amount of uh, uh, the amount of stuff you can build with it, the amount of level design you can do with it, I think is 100% worth it. So I would definitely suggest it. Uh, if it goes on sale, even better. But uh, I think even just the the base price of admission is is well worth the price. So uh, if it's if it interests you, please use the link in the description um, so I can keep on doing these. Uh, again, these as I've said before, I pay for all these out of my own pocket, so um, my opinions are my opinions, and buying them through those links gives me a little bit of the sale, um, uh, just a small percentage. So that adds up if enough people buy it, and I can keep on doing this uh, after I run out of the thousands of assets that I have in my uh, inventory to go through. So hope you liked it. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you have this asset pack, I'd love to know what you think about it. Um, and uh, I will see everyone in the next one.